Welcome to the 21st Century Reformation Hour. I'm Pastor Herman Otten, Trinity Lutheran Church, New Haven, and I'm also the editor of Christian News. We have here a little guest here to show you what I have to put up with all these years. First it was my own children in my office running around. Now I have a whole bunch of grandchildren, but now, Rachel, you're going to have to go on while we talk here. I want to begin now with the back page of the latest issue of Christian News. This is September 23. Again, it refers to that ruling, as I told you last week, I have the entire ruling here, just photographed and just the way the judge said it. And this is a tremendous ruling. You want to know why hasn't it been said much about it? You ask your own pastor the question or ask the officials of our church. Here it says, LCMS invited to respond to ruling. What I did, I wrote to the LCMS attorney and I asked, now I understand you don't like the ruling. Well, here, Christian News will publish any errors you may have found in the ruling. As the attorney for the LCMS district and LCMS, do you intend to appeal the ruling? How much has this case cost your client? Over here I have a picture of the multi-million dollar office building of the California and Hawaii Nevada district, which I suggest if they pay the room to pay the cost of the ruling, they may have to sell because after all, we don't really need all those districts' presidents anyway. All right, going to back to page one now. There we have, Evolution Leads to Denial of Christian Faith. I have a copy of a uh, cover of the front page of the Creation Research Society Quarterly. Now, that's a rather difficult publication for most people to read. There are simple articles in it. But the Creation Research Society is an organization of several hundred scientists who believe in what the Bible actually says about Genesis. I have in the issue this week, I actually photographed their statement of belief. And here it is, I'll read it from the back page here. The Bible is the written word of God, and because it is inspired throughout, all its assertions are historically and scientifically true in all the original autographs. To the student of nature, this means that the account of origins in Genesis is a factual presentation of simple historical truths. And here then they affirm their conviction in the historicity of the Genesis creation account, the, the reality of the great flood, and the, actually most of the, my article this week is taken from the lead editorial, which is entitled, It's Time for Atheists to Get Real. And then they comment on prayer, you know, how, how atheists ridicule prayer, and they show you, uh, for instance here, Christianity has a universal standard for reasoning. As creator, Christ is the ultimate source of all wisdom and rational thought. By contrast, atheism has no source of reasoning or external standard. Atheist standard for reasoning merely seems to be anything that leads them to atheism, a rather self-serving but not very meaningful standard. One of the primary purposes of the Creation Research Society, they don't have that many meetings, but to show American people, there are several hundred scientists in this country, they have their advanced degrees in chemistry, biology, physics, who affirm the Genesis account of creation. Well, now to some of the other articles here. I have here, God Opens Doors, evolutionist Matthew Becker, associate editor. You know, last week we talked to you about, I had filed charges against a gentleman in our church, a, pa a professor, who firmly came out for evolution. He's been doing that for years. He was the associate, is the associate editor of this book called God Opens Doors, 1899-1999, a centennial celebration of the Northwest District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. He has a chapter in there in which he talks about 21st century trends and issues. He comes all out for evolution in this chapter. He mentions some of his heroes, Tracy, uh, Professor Tracy, who was his professor at the University of Chicago. But one gentleman he follows here is a classmate of mine, a Dr. Harold Rolick. He and I went to school together for six years, two years at Concordia Bronxville, four years at seminary, and he comes out all open for evolution. Here's a book, and now this is what Becker, who my char filed charges against, this is what he, he mentions this book here. Here it is. This is a professor, pastor, he's dead now, but he just died recently, but he was approved in this book 
God's open doors. This being the case, it follows then that an animal with an intelligence similar to that of Homo sapiens today would finally evolve. If man had not evolved to his present state, sooner or later, another species of animal would have evolved human-like intelligence. I'll skip a few pages here. Man's place in the animal world. Now, this is a Missouri Senate pastor who never was disciplined in any way, approved by his district. In this book here, when the long evolutionary continuum of life leading to modern man is surveyed, from the insectivory-like stage of 70 million years ago, through the ape-like stage of 30 million years ago, and finally rather rapidly through a pre-hominid stage to Homo sapiens of today, it would be plain how difficult it is to separate our species in any significant way from animals. Well, I could go on. Clearly comes out for evolution, and that was approved by the Northwest District. Nothing was done. Now we will see with this new presidium whether finally something will be done about an evolutionist on our clergy roster. He also recommends a, a professor, a pastor Hall, Professor Hall, Professor Hall recently in the Christian Century, this is the September 7th issue, he prevents his views. Here's the final paragraph that he says. Probably if I am granted more years beyond my present 82, my mind will change again. But I hope that it will always be cha changed for the sake of distinguishing a living and therefore modest faith from the great temptation of all religion. Now, what is the great temptation? Which is to imagine itself true. And that's Matthew Becker's basic pro problem. Oh, there are many other articles here, but this is a little bit out of line from what we used to what we have in Christian news. I call it the shot heard round the world. Now, how many of you remember the shot heard round the world? Well, Bobby Thompson just died. Bobby Thompson was a famous ball player. I can just read, oh my goodness, here I can't talk much longer. He hit that shot. The Dodgers and the Giants were closing in on the pennant race. The final game, it looked like the Dodgers were going to win, but then Bobby Thompson hit that shot heard round the world. A friend of mine knew the pitcher that threw it. He himself played professional baseball, and he interviewed him. This is what he said. Ralph Banker was the pitcher. He said, isn't it funny? Isn't life funny? I was just another pitcher who would be forgotten in a few years. Don't you realize by throwing that home run ball, it turned out to be the greatest thing I could have done. I go on trips to speak, great food, great golf, and everyone knows me. Well, what I try to point out here, we were in that room then. Listening to the shot, I was an avid Dodger fan. We had to jump out the window. All the fanatic Giant fans were after us. Now, Bruce Bahoney, he was a Giant. He, was, he went on to play professional baseball. Ralph Brank had told him that. But I mentioned here, we heard at Concordia Bronxville, and we went to the seminary, another shot that was heard around the world. And I end up by saying that that shot, of course, was far more important than any baseball shot. All those sports, they all go away. But that shot, the death crucifixion and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. That will last on, go on forever. Well, there are many other things I could talk about you. I urge you to get the paper. I think that if you check the online here, you can see how you subscribe to the paper. It is, again, chucked full with all kinds of things, particularly about that recent rally that they had in St. Louis there uh, by Beck. Uh, and uh, then you can see various views expressed on that, how he promotes Mormonism. He is a Mormon here. And I have two books that were, at first, a video on Mormonism and a book on Mormonism entitled Speaking the Truth to Love. And it really shows that Mormonism really is paganism. It is not Christianity. And that, of course, does not get through. Well, again, in closing, I have the final uh, thing here on top, our Bible passage for the week. And the reason I did it, because of Glenn Beck's big rally there, you can see the rally there. No one else can save us, because in all the world there's only one name given us by which we must be saved, and that is Jesus Christ. It is nobody else, and that's what so many of these people fail to recognize. Only one name saves us, and that is Jesus Christ.